events, extract the signal from the noise, and this is an incredible OpenStack Summit. I'm joined with my co-host Jeff Frick and Alessandro Pigliotti. Nice to meet you. Nice to have you on theCUBE. I know you're running quickly. I know we're a little bit behind. I uh, had you scheduled in about five minutes earlier, but you were on stage downstairs yeah. in the main hall. I mean, there's a packed house down there. The room's packed. Had the hard to get out of there. <laughs> it's hard to get out of there. It's like, <laughs> like rushing through the crowd stampede. Yeah. Um, but uh, quickly Goopies. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, <laughs> so tell us about your company and give the quick overview of what you guys are doing, then we'll jump into yeah. some questions. We are doing the integration between OpenStack and Hyper-V and in general Microsoft technologies. So we developed um, all the um, Nova Compute Driver, Quantum, uh, Cinder, Nova Volume for um, so Hyper-V, uh, Windows Storage Server. We develop also the cloud need for Windows. So let's say we are focused on the integration within the interoperability between uh, Windows and Microsoft products and OpenStack. So it's, that, so it's cloud based is software? Yeah, exactly. And not infrastructure? Not infrastructure. So software and software services? and services, yeah. So all our products are open source, okay? And on top of it, we provide services and consulting. Got it, so it's free software? Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Open source, I mean, we. It's yeah. the model of many. We love open source. Yeah. Scale out, <laughs> scale yeah. out open source. It's changing the world, and this is really the beginning of it. Um, take us through some of your engagements with customers. What are you guys delivering for the kinds of services that you're working with them on? Yeah, so we have a lot of customers which uh, want to run um, um, virtual workloads which are Microsoft based. And of course, the only real way to do that is to run it on top of Hyper-V, because Hyper-V, it's a Microsoft product, so Windows runs in the best possible way on top of Hyper-V from this yeah, perspective. So they're very interested about it and they come to us because they need consulting about how to do it, uh, consulting about how to better leverage the technology, how to do massive deployments because of course OpenStack is a technology which um, it's mostly um, employed, let's say, in scenarios which are um, involving thousands of servers. Right. So not something that you can do lightly without having experience and about how to do it. And we are the guys who wrote this. so. We know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. And so, are, are most your engagements around um, where, where the, uh, the legacy environment is a Microsoft environment, so that's where yeah. you guys are playing. So we haven't heard much about Microsoft here, John, in the last uh, day or so. So what is kind of the Microsoft take on the OpenStack? Uh, well, what it represents. Um, I'm not for Microsoft, so right, <laughs> I cannot right, give their take on this perspective. That's why we asked, that's why we asked yeah. you. <laughs> 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 you're on the ground, you're, you're with the truth. We're it's gonna hear the, the truth. Uh, okay. Out in the field. Um, <laughs> that's why we're in Portland, not Seattle. Um, let's Amazon put it this way. <laughs> let's put it this way. Um, we are doing this work and we are a completely autonomous company, okay? Right, right. And um, we work, of course, together with Microsoft. I mean, they're very supportive sure, in sure. helping us with all the information that we need. I'm a Microsoft MVP. So I work together with on Microsoft technology since ages, okay? And um, of course Microsoft has also their um, other technologies which are Azure or System Center, right. okay? So we want to make sure that OpenStack is not going in, um, let's say, competition with their technologies. It's uh, actually taking a completely other segment of the market. Right, right. Well, it's, it's, it fits right in with every thing we've been talking about, which is that yeah. people have incumbent systems, they have legacy systems, they yeah. have big pieces of investment and business running on. Yeah, I will not use necessarily systems. the word legacy here because okay. there are a lot of new deployments based on Windows Server 2012. Okay. For example, we are distributing now a Windows Server 2012 evaluation version already packaged with uh, all the OpenStack related features, including our cloud in it, all the drivers, for example, Virt.io for uh, for KVM or Xen Server Tools uh, or everything related to Hyper-V, you can just download it and deploy it in Glance, so in OpenStack, without needing to know anything about how to do all the dirty work behind. Great. And, and, what, were you, what, and what were you showing just now? What was your uh, Yeah, that's one demo? of the things I, I was demoing about all the Hyper-V integration. I was showing about this great news. Actually, we published it today. So Microsoft gave us the, uh, this opportunity so you can just go on our website and download these images. You have, of course, to uh, accept the um, license, which is from Microsoft, it's not okay. our license. Okay. It's completely free again. Uh, we, we provide it as a free service. It's an evaluation, of course, copy. <laughs> so you cannot just <laughs> use right. it in production, that's for sure. So take us through, I know we've got a couple minutes left yeah. here because our next guest comes on, but I want to get your opinion of what's happening here at OpenStack. Yeah. Obviously, it's a great community. It's grown yeah. uh, and just in credibility and authority around you have real coders coming in, contributing yeah. software. It's open source based, yeah. good governance, real deployments, good proof of concept. So sure. you have a lot of production action going on. So yeah. as we say, there's a lot of meat on the bone here. Yeah. Um, share with the folks out there your observations, what's happening in OpenStack. What are the cool things that, that you think well, are th that they should know about? I'm frankly amazed about how fast this project grew up. I mean, if you think about that, it started only in 2010 and they have a very aggressive release cycle. 
I mean, every six months there is a new release, and it's the quality is amazing. And also, I work quite a lot in open source. I work with Microsoft Technologies, and uh, the way in which um, also all the code infrastructure is made, on it's incredible. I mean, you can just take any nightly build to say so of OpenStack, and it will work almost seamlessly. Okay, so we are of course pretty far away still from continuous deployment, but. The, the quality of the code is amazing. The quality of the contributors is amazing. Uh, the, level, the level of coding is an enormous entry level, okay, for, for companies. I mean, in, in the, uh, also the way in which the core developers are evaluating and reviewing your code is very, very strict. Mm. They are rising the bar continuously. I believe that there is one of the top notch products and projects right now out there. Now yeah. why, is it, the, is it the, the passion? Is it because where we are on kind of the life cycle of an open source project that we're, you know, this is one of the latter ones, or I why? I think that, um, uh, of course, the, the history of open source project is pretty long. So when they started this project, uh, they knew all the mistakes in the previous ones, okay? okay? So they knew how to manage a large project like this one. Consider that we had um, almost 500 developers here this time. Uh, which is huge if you think about this, and also a lot of companies involved. And this project is not controlled by anybody, de facto, because it's a... Uh, it's a community. It's, it's a community, yeah. So it's, um, I it's, it's great from this perspective. I mean, it's not uh, other open source projects, in a way or the other, are controlled by a single company. It's definitely not the case here. The vendor neutral is a great angle Yeah, here. and every vendor can just take it. Another important thing is Apache 2 license, meaning that anybody can take the code and create a commercial product on top of it. Okay. So it's so not like the so GPL code in which you have to recommit everything back to the community. Mm. Talk about Amazon, what yeah. have they have done? Because they, they are the gold standard. They're yeah. doing a lot of things, they're introducing more products. Talk about the bar being raised. Yeah. Uh, a lot of developers love working with, um, op with AWS. Yeah, it's just sure. so good, I mean, they're, they're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, but for large companies, <laughs> it's not yeah. that easy. Um, what's your take on Amazon? Well, we have, for example, a migration product which makes it uh, absolutely easy to migrate for AWS. So EC2 migrate to, for example, Azure, to OpenStack, or to whatever other technology. Because, of course, Amazon started this business, to say so, okay? So kudos for them to the way in which they created it. And, of course, they started with already a high level, okay? So in the moment in which Opens, OpenStack started, you can see, of course, a lot of influence from Amazon inside of OpenStack, but now OpenStack is taking its own way, its own way take. So now, for my opinion, it's also Amazon time mm. to for a confrontation with what this great project is bringing. Yeah, Amazon's got to up their game and recognize that you know the fight for the enterprise is going to be <laughs> it's going to yeah. be well tough. defended. <laughs> it's going to be tough, and uh, also um, uh, Amazon is of course not the only one in the domain. There is also Azure, Microsoft. There is of course Google, and uh, big companies which are based of course on uh, on OpenStack. I mean, so it's a it's a very interesting arena from my perspective. And consider also the fact that so we are originally from Europe. And uh, a lot of companies in Europe uh, prefer to have their data stored in data centers in their home countries, especially uh, government-related companies. Sure. So they don't want their data in uh, databases, uh, in, in data Seattle. centers, sorry, which are uh, in Seattle, let's say, outside of their territories, right, right. even if we, are, if we live in a globalized environment. And OpenStack uh, is great from an international perspective. That Not only from a U.S. perspective, which of course is yeah. the place of birth of this technology. So in that use case, the European example you mentioned, it yeah. really highlights what we were just talking about, Jeff, around infrastructure as code. Yeah. People, developers need to be involved. It's not just stack and rack and see you yeah. later, manage it. There's a lot of active, a lot of management automation going on, which Sean from uh, uh, Service Mesh was talking about. Yeah. Um, we're here with Alessandro Pilat from CloudBase. Um, Startup, you guys are doing great stuff. Final Thank word you. to you is I want you to share with the folks your goals for the next year as a, as a company growing up in, in this great market. What you, what's your goals for next year? Well, we are going up at a crazily fast rate. So we started last year. Our work with OpenStack started with Folsom. Now we work like crazy this six, year, six months and we released an amazingly number of new feature and we decided to rise the bar even higher for Havana and we have even bigger plans for the next time. I mean, so. Take a look at our website, uh, come to our sessions and everything because you will see great new stuff there. Great. Cloud-based hot startup, obviously OpenStack, obviously on an inflection point crossing over to the mainstream. Um, developers, enterprise, are the big companies here and you get the startups like Cloud-based, so this is it, this is the action uh, here live exclusively on siliconangle.com is our continuous coverage of the OpenStack Summit here in Portland. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.